Yes, indeed, vacation. Here it is, uh, Mudbox 2009. Uh, I was on the beta for this, so I know it's like the back of my smegging hand. Um, now, what we've got here is this is a spike. I've seen it on YouTube, um, the version I did in ZBrush, and I never liked the way it turned out, so I redid the base mesh, and I thought, well, I'll actually have to give it a go uh, in Mudbox, and that's what I did. Now, at the moment, I've got Tone Mapper on, Depth of Field, and Ambient Occlusion. All that, then. If you want Ambient Occlusion, you're going to need an NVIDIA card, basically. Um, eight series above. Uh, this is wrote for high end um, of the industry. What I mean by that, it's not aimed so much at the hobbyist. I'm saying that in my capacity as Wayne Robson, all right? Uh, just normal bloke. Now let's get rid of the grid and turn the gradient background off. Now I've got mine set to black in the uh, preferences. Now I'm having to redo this one at the moment. You see the gamma there, you can turn turned up and down. Now I've got on here an IBL node, you can find it under the Create Lights menu. Now that's lit with the studio lighting, so let's turn it off and have a look at the main lights here. Now I've turned this right down. If you wonder why it's a bit of a slowdown, this is simply because I was running the capture software. So let's get a, just a bit of a rim going on there. Let's change the colour as well. I think I changed the colour to blue on this. A nice angry sort of uh, saturated blue. I also forgot to put my uh, 8 gig ready boost uh, USB stick. Hear that? I forgot. It's on the top of the desk. So there you go. You can actually clock any of these sliders over and under clock. You can have a minus value. You can have a minus intensity. That would be interesting. Or you can Overclock. So let's take it about 84 there. Uh, the studio lighting one is one that I actually created um, instead of 3D Max. So you can match everything perfectly. You can see there the depth of field effect. It's blurred when we get too far inside or outside of the focus plane. And we can get that um, full focus in using the depth of field sliders. Now let's turn all that off. Now that screen refresh is necessary for everything to work. It's not a bug. Okay. So there's the raw model. It's only at uh, sort of vision level 4 at the moment, so it's only about just under 2 million in the viewport. Um, we'll step up in a moment uh, later on to its highest sort of vision level of 17 odd million. Uh, the world record at the moment for highest poly count uh, under the beta was over 100 million. Now you want a little trick here to speed it up. This is something that uh, isn't in the public domain until this very second. See this enable pre-processing on load under your files in the preference menu. Stick it on one. There's a drawback to that. It changes the point order. So if you need the point order to stay the same on your base mesh and the rest of your mesh, don't use that. It's limited to about, well, about less than 20,000 faces or so for your base mesh. Um, and it speeds things up a lot. And you can get some crazy frames per second. You can see I'm, on this it's a bit choppy because I'm using a 15 uh, FPS capture, but it's actually <laughs> right up there. Now, the closer you get to the screen, the higher it will send your GPU memory up. You don't really want to be doing that the whole model. You want to be hiding sections of it. So if you're used to working very close up, hide the bits you don't need. You can make your groups the same as you could in the first mud box. Now, let's try the uh, the knife brush here. Now, we're on uh, 2 million, as I said. Uh, so I'll turn the, it up a bit. You can see, look, it's, <laughs> it's fast, okay? It's, it's not going to... Uh, there's no slowdown. So let's step up uh, a subdivision level, um, and we'll be going up to uh, about 4.3 million. I'll just have a look at Yeah, 4.3 million. Let's see how it behaves on that. I already know, of course, exactly how it behaves. It behaves like a knife through butter. There you go. We're now at 17.3 million. That's raw polygons. So it's <laughs> There you go. Very fast. What more do you need? So I see you can go higher than that. Um, but the higher you go, remember, your file size gets bigger as well. So you've got to store all this stuff. So there you go. If I go close up the screen, you can see they have one of 837 of my GPU memory. Because I've got a 1 gig uh, graphics card. Um, 7 900 GT 1 gig thingy. Now, if you want to save some uh, resources, and there's somebody popped up on YouTube, um, turn your shadows off, first of all, because that uses a fair whack of your GPU memory, as does the effects. And you see it speeded right up there. 
three hundred a second went we're going up into the about a hundred so now I'll have to stop the capture in a second because you can't actually <laughs> for some reason Camtasia buggers up uh, the right click uh, on the IBLs at least for me because I'm running Vista um, so what I'm going to do is basically stop everything and then delete it just right click go down and delete and you'll save a whack of memory so we'll just wait until uh, I get around to doing that and there you go so now we've just got the normal light so let's stick it back to white and turn it it's back up to one there focus it in the model by holding on the L key and just move it around you get different effects with the right and left mouse key by the way now I've got all those off just always check though the paint channel say I've got a, a, a two or three two layers of bump maps of uh, 4k bumps on that so let's turn those off you want to save even more go to this default blin you won't get any ambient occlusion on any screen effects it's basically a bit like um, your um, quick shader, fast shader in ZBrush um, and it is fast, you can get it much higher um, now the repeating texture, now this is, <laughs> this is a spend I've, got, I've got a load of custom brushes uh, not all of them are installed in here yet now this one's a skull brush and this is absolutely brilliant it, all it does is it draws tiny little skulls in a line right? using the uh, steady stroke and you see there all these tiny little upper skulls which is great, I spent an entire night just drawing like thousands of skulls on a flat plane as a polygon test. Now if you get too big and you're on a curved area it's going to slow down because it's trying to align a lot of polygons to even more polygons. Using a 32-bit displacement map you can create that inside of Mudbox and then use it to add geometry. I bet that's got you thinking. Flatten brush, let's turn it up a bit from there. And you see that's 17 million and it's working great. Turn the square brush up as well. Right up 100. How fast do you need, you know what I mean? The knife we've already shown you. The wax, uh, I think clear brushes uh, inside a ZBrush. Um, the feel is a lot better. It is like working with wax if anybody's worked with wax. Put on a flat one. Um, you'd actually want steady stroke as well and then you wouldn't get the round circles and then it turns into a clear tube brush. You can also, if you use a stamp, it's then a rake. Formy brush, good for adding uh, initial forms, basically the standard two brush in Mudbox 1. Um, that's basically what you want to use it for, your initial forms. We we'll showed you the repeating one, uh, imprint one is basically just a, a drag a shape out thingy. Now, smear comes in handy, especially if you're doing something like hair, and you think, well, it's looking a bit too regular, so you just wiggle it round a bit and it looks a whole lot better. Now the contrast brush is just like turning the contrast up on your TV. So if you've got a fine detail now, this is sort of get, breaking the golden rule going in too close. Now you see there hopefully through the YouTube encoding that the shallow details suddenly get a whole lot sharper. So if you've um, got a displacement map or something you've imported and put in one and think, well it's a bit weak, it doesn't look as sharp as I want, just run the contrast brush over it. Tendril brush, that's a top secret one of mine. Uh, I won't be sharing all the settings of that one, that's as near as you're going to get. It's got a very interesting effect. Um, that was from the beta. So there you go, if you want to know how this turned out, it turned out like that. Uh, that's the final render. Now that's a uh, 8,000 tries game mesh. I've just smoothed it for this for the beauty shot, but uh, 8,000 tries, uh, 2k maps, diffuse, colour, specular, and normal for the body, uh, and the same for the bits like, you know, his loincloth, his buckle, the belt around his waist, and the straps around his feet and his hands. And there you go. So that's two 2k map setups. It looked basically the same inside a mud box. So there you go. So what is my true estimation of mud box? It's good. Uh, it's very good. Um, it's not primarily a hobbyist tool. This is a you know a proper production tool here. Um, so you do need the PC to run it. Uh, I know that's a, you know going to be a sticking point for some people, but I promise you it is worth it. When you get into polygon counts of you know over 50 million, and you extract your displacement maps and everything like that from it, and it you know what more do you need? Um, I know what's around the corner in Mudbox. I can't see a word. But all I'm going to say is, you ain't seen nothing yet, boy -o. So, that's my very quick uh, review of uh, the first 24 hours of uh, the proper Mudbox release. I hope you've liked it, I hope you found it of use. Uh, I'll add some more stuff as I've got time.